Hi, this is Frank. In the last video, I made the boxes for the new storage system. And in this video, I'm going to make the drawers. Many, many drawers. I started early on, I think just after I made the first box, by making a set of the drawer bottoms. So the drawers will work by sitting on a quarter inch piece of plywood that will run in the slots that I've cut in the side of the boxes. I can make a set of these drawer bottoms. And the first thing I wanted to do was to see if it would work. And it did. And it seemed like it was going to be okay. I guess the problem would be that they wouldn't slide in the slots very well. But they seemed to be okay. The next thing I did was to make handles for the drawers. In this method of making drawers, oftentimes a little bump will be left on the drawer bottom, which will become the handle for the drawer. Because my boxes are 16 inches square, and I can cut my drawer bottoms from a 4x8 sheet and have very little waste, I would have to subtract from the drawer size to get the handle to be part of the bottom, if that makes sense. So I didn't want to make the handle be part of the drawer bottom. So I made the handle as a separate piece that would just attach to the front of the drawer. I just made some simple rectangular pieces from some scrap maple that I had for the handles. So each box has 18 slots for 18 drawers. And I did that number so that I could have single height, double height, and triple height drawers in the boxes. And it would work out evenly. In the end, I haven't done the triple height drawers. That just seemed too tall once I got into building these. So the first set of drawers I've made were some double height drawers. And I made the faces for those. And I attached the handles to the faces before I started to make the drawer. As I wanted to use two pin nails from the inside to help hold the handle onto the face. I put a little glue on the handle. Then clamped that to the face and attached the handle with two pin nails. Then I could attach the face to the bottom of the drawer. That was just some glue and some pin nails. So these first set of drawers are going to be a face and a thick bottom that I can put a bunch of holes in. And those holes will hold router bits. I figured this was an easy first drawer to make as there's no real box for the drawer. It's just a, a face and a bottom. And I've been storing my router bits for the CNC machine horribly, as I've just been slowly collecting more and more of them. But it's gotten to the point where I really want to have more of a system and a nicer way to hold them. So they're not banging around and lying around in different locations. So with the thick piece that's going to hold the router bits, I didn't want to glue or nail that to the drawer, as I might want to replace these at some point in the future. So I used screws to attach that piece. Then that can just go into the slots in the box. And it seems to work. <laughs> and I can finally get my router bits organized. I made one drawer that's half-inch router bits and sort of bigger things and a drawer that's quarter inch bits. So this is the half inch drawer. The main kind of drawer in the system is going to be the single height drawer, which will be a series of boxes to hold small things, screws and bolts, that kind of stuff. I made a prototype drawer and it, it worked okay, but it took a while to make it and there was no way I was going to make the 100 plus drawers I was going to make with that method within this year. <laughs> so I made a jig to hold the parts of the drawer as I put the drawer together. 
and I found a scrap piece of MDF that I had and I glued those pieces down to a backing piece. Then I could cut out the outside size and then slots within that piece to hold the parts of the drawer. I could have just done this out of a single piece of MDF, but I had a nice strip of MDF that I could use for this, so I made it out of parts. <laughs> I made this first for one kind of plywood that I was using, and that plywood just wasn't quite good enough quality, I was feeling. The, the pin nails weren't really holding, and it didn't really look that good either. So I ended up reshaping this a little bit and getting some birch plywood, which is a, a little bit higher quality. And I got a bunch of, I think it's six millimeter birch plywood, which is actually a lot closer to a quarter inch than quarter inch plywood. <laughs> but this worked a lot better. So the first thing to do is to cut a lot of strips. And these strips will be the height of the face and the box part of the drawers. I had to figure out a little bit the number of drawers I could make from the number of sheets of plywood I had and by the number of strips I could cut. So the first step of just cutting strips was just cutting everything into strips and that wasn't too difficult. The second step, cutting the strips into the right lengths for the parts of the drawers, I had to do some math to figure out how many fronts I needed, how many sides I needed, and then how many cross pieces in the middle of the drawer I needed. So it was a matter of taking that ratio and then multiplying it by the number of pieces that I could make from the strips, which was four pieces per strip. Added to this, I could only get four pieces per strip if I only cut two of the longer side pieces from each strip. Those sitting at the corner of the workbench are the side pieces, then in the middle are the fronts, and now I'm working on the cross pieces. These are just the pieces for the first batch of drawers, which I think did three of the cabinets. <laughs> So the first thing to do is to put the handles on the fronts. And with any project where you're doing the same thing over and over again, you get faster and faster. So when I started with the first set of drawers, I was clamping everything and holding everything in place and making sure everything was just exactly perfect. And it got to more where I would just put some glue on, put it in place, it looked about right, and put the nails in. This worked just as well. <laughs> so there were a lot to do, but it got going pretty fast. And I would do things in sets, so I'd sort of be doing the same thing over and over again. Now the side pieces and cross pieces need some notches cut in them, as I'm going to have them sort of nest together. So the cross pieces need a notch cut in the middle, and I set up a stop, and a zero clearance piece for the radial arm saw, and that went pretty fast. For the center piece that goes down the middle of the drawer, I needed a series of notches to take each of the cross pieces. So for that, I couldn't do a stop, and I made a sort of a master piece that I would copy with, with each set of notches that I had to cut. I reshaped my jig a little bit, but it worked pretty well. I could do the center piece and then the face. And the face, I had a little tiny mark on the jig. And if I lined up the face with that, it would be centered. Then I could put the cross pieces in. So the, the center piece and the cross pieces basically divide the drawer into smaller cubbies for smaller parts. I could line up the pieces with the jig. Then I could pin nail the face. Then I could work on the sides, put glue on the cross pieces. I kept the glue towards the top of the pieces so I wouldn't get glue on the jig. 
I also nailed at the top while the piece was on the jig so that I wouldn't accidentally nail the drawer to the jig as that would make it really hard to get apart. <laughs> I could nail the front on and then I could do the sides. I could look down on, on the drawer from above and I could see where the nail needed to go. And I really only had a few stray nails that, that didn't go into the wood. For the most part, it worked pretty well. Now my jig was just slightly too long, so I had to take the drawer off to put the back piece on. But this wasn't too big of a deal. And then once the drawer was off the jig, I could do the nails at the bottom of the sides and kind of make sure everything was tight. Then I had sort of the, the sides of the drawer done. So this got faster and faster as I got better at it. Then at some point I just automated my jig, which made everything much easier and went much faster. <laughs> That was just the first half of making the drawer. Now I need to glue all of these drawer sides down to the bottom piece. Just like the other steps, it started out where everything was careful and clamped and slow, <laughs> and it got faster and faster. I would just clamp the front, nail the front in place, square the sides up to the bottom, clamp the back, nail the back in place, and then do the sides in the center. And I had a adjustable square with me that I could use to measure the distance from the side of the bottom into the side of the drawer so that I could put the nails in the right place along the sides. And those can start to go into the boxes. Once I had a few drawers made, I really wanted to start getting things organized. <laughs> so I started finding screws around the shop. And I've got little collections of them all over the place in the shop. I did not set these up for the camera. These are, are truly things that I'm finding around the shop. And Claire wanted to help sort screws. So I had her help get all of these organized. And it's really nice having everything in its place. I'm still finding screws around the shop that need places to go. I was finding as I was making places for different sets of screws that I really needed even more division within the drawers. So I made a set of dividers that I can glue in place sort of at will and that'll help divide the cubbies within the drawers. Sometimes I'll just have a set of five or ten screws that need a spot. I really don't need much space for that. The other thing that really needs to happen is I have to label the fronts of the drawers. And the things in the drawers need to kind of follow what that label is. I've started putting some label holders on the fronts of the drawers. I found a small scrap of wood that was just about the right thickness to hold the label holder up from the handle. And I can use that to make sure all of the label holders are in the same place on each drawer. And that seems to work pretty well. And I've started putting a few labels in. I will definitely need more and I will definitely need a system for where everything is. I sort of need to start sorting to help figure out what that system's going to be. A subset of the single height drawers that I wanted to make were some drawers that didn't have any dividers in them. It'd just be a, a simple square. And I can put some foam in those drawers and then make specific spots for a few things in the shop. 
I've found there's a handful of objects in the shop that just really want a very specific parking spot so that they're always there and I know where they are when I need them. One of those things is my calipers that are really useful with the CNC machine. So I found this foam cuts easy enough that I can just trace whatever it is I want a cutout for with an X-Acto blade, then pull out the foam that I don't want, and I have a perfect little cutout for whatever tool it is that needs a spot. When I need my calipers, I know right where they are. And if they're not there, I know who to blame for not putting them away. <laughs> and the wrenches for the CNC collet are really important too. Now for the double height drawers. So these won't have any dividers. They'll just be a box. And I started by making the fronts. And I decided with these, I'd make the fronts out of half inch plywood and I'd make the sides out of the quarter inch birch plywood that I had used for the single height drawers. This was mostly to make the, the fronts a little stiffer and I had some of that and it, it freed up the birch plywood for the drawers themselves. So I can attach the handles. And at this point I had done so many of these that I had gotten a lot quicker with it. I wasn't doing the clamping or any of that. <laughs> I can cut the strips to make the sides for the double height drawers. I also decided to make the sides and the backs of the drawers a little shorter than the fronts, as I didn't really need a full height box for each drawer. This would save a little bit on material and it would save a little bit on weight on the system as a whole. And with these, I decided I would cut a dado into the front of the drawer and this would take the sides of the drawer. So it would help in putting the drawers together. And it would mean the nails wouldn't have to go all the way through the half inch material to find the quarter inch end to go into. And I can cut the sides and the backs from the strips. So putting these doors together was just some glue in the dados, put the sides in, nail those in place, put the back on, and the back was just simply attached. I didn't do any kind of joint or anything at that point. These don't really need to be that strong. I discovered as I was putting these drawers up that my upper boxes, many of them, the sides bowed a little bit and it was causing the drawers to not quite reach all the way across. What I realized I could do, because I'd kept the sides and the backs of the drawers a little lower, I could hide a little support piece in the middle of the drawer box. I attached a piece that would span across the drawer box and hold the sides a little bit straighter. Having a close to four foot length of plywood is pushing the limits of how straight you can keep that. The first time I put the first support in, I had it flush with the front of the box and that didn't work with the drawer because the drawer face has some thickness. So I had to push the support piece back the, th the thickness of the drawer front. Now a few of these were a little tight but luckily the disc sander is good at taking off just a little bit of material. I'm going to need to make some kind of ladder to get up to these drawers. At this point, they're not super useful being so high. <laughs> Beyond the drawers, I also wanted to start to think about how to hang things within the spaces between the boxes. So I made a series of hooks that will hang on the French cleat system that's between the boxes. So I made some strips that are a cleat on one side and a spacer at the other side. And once I had those made, I could cut them into shorter sections. And each one of those sh shorter pieces makes a little support for some kind of hook. 
and I can sand those. The first thought I had was to use some of the extra handles that I had to attach those to these backer pieces I've just made. So I just put a screw through the backer piece and then into the, the handle piece. And that seemed to work pretty well. I also realized I now have a drawer with hooks in it that's even labeled. <laughs> so I can find my hooks. So I decided I could use some of those. So I think this is just a start on this system. I think I will make different customizable things as I find things that I want to hang in this space. And the, the thought for the space between the drawers was that it was, it was for bigger things, but also sort of long things. There seem to be a lot of long things that need to be hung, whether it's T-squares or bandsaw blades or jigs for the CNC and camera jigs. So th those kind of things can go in this, those spaces, which would be kind of nice to have a spot for that. So it's mostly done. Basi basically the system is in place and most, some of the drawers have things in them. I, I still need to find more stuff to put in a lot of the other drawers. Um, I ran out of label holders. So all the ones that I have are up. And I've put a few things in the spaces between the drawers. And I like to continue finding things to put in there. But the, the system is sort of up and running and I can mostly call it done at this point. I'll put a, a link in the out screen over, I think in that corner, where I'll put the part one of this video where I make the, the boxes for, for the drawers. Um, and don't forget about Maker's Mob. I'll have a link down below if you wanna check that out. Thanks for watching.